I heard you was a millionaire. I said, that's not right. That's not true. He said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. Malta. Now add that to it and you'll be all right. Oh, he couldn't handle that. He liked to have had a fit. And I said, you mess with me, I'll buy this station and I'll fire you. Yeah. Oh, he didn't like that, did he? Did he? Uh, you know, that was a little fleshy, but it felt good. I just need more. I just need more. One of my chandeliers costs more than most people's house. I got 22 chandeliers in the house. I started giving on the level where I put God in debt. And God said, I'll owe no man. I started giving on the money that I wanted to make. I started giving on a deal that hadn't closed yet. And that God had to open up the windows of heaven and pull me out a blessing because he wasn't going to be in debt to me. If I want to believe God for a 65 million dollar plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. Ah, ah, oh, I'll be out on this money. Woo! Put, put this anointing on this money, man. Woo! Put some money. Put some anointing on this money. You put something up here. You put... It, it. Prosper. Prosper, I said. Money! Who knew that we would ever live to see the day where Christians are in the house of God, stretching out their hands, not to Jesus, but to money. Not begging for forgiveness, not begging for the word, the deeper truths to be revealed to them of the character of the living God, but begging for the prosperity of the world. That is absolutely demonic. You are living in a generation right now, I kid you not, that is of special note. In John chapter 2, verse 14, Yeshua says this, And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he's going to turn violent. He makes a whip of cords. He drove them all out of the temple. The whip was for them with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers' money, and he overturned the tables, and he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. You want to provoke the Lord to anger where he comes out of his normal character of being that God. When he introduced himself to Moses, the Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, You want to provoke him to anger? You want to see a different side of him? Just turn the house of God into a house of covetousness. And you will see the judgment of God. All these corrupt shepherds that are out on the pulpits today, peddling this seeker-sensitive, watered-down, greasy grace, prosperity gospel, they should read the Bible. They should tremble with the fear of God, because I'm going to tell you right now, you don't get to fit or fill the pulpits. You don't get to take this great responsibility of declaring the gospel and peddling a gospel of prosperity and walk away from that. You will never walk away. You will experience the judgment of God. Teachers have even a stricter judgment. It's a frightening thought. You know, and the tragedy of the situation is this. The shepherds aren't the whole totality of the problem. The problem is much bigger. The problem are the people. Ponder this for a second. How much influence, how much impact will all these prosperity preachers that are just giving their hearts to covetousness, how much impact really are they going to have on anyone if no one's listening to them? If they didn't have anyone, there would be no influence. And yet, the masses flock to these people. They flock to them. And it goes back to what we talked about in our last message with the Apostle Paul talking to Timothy in his second epistle that a time will come. They wouldn't endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, their covetous desires, with itching ears, 
They will heap up for themselves teachers. I mean, if you've been around for the last four decades, you've seen how the mega churches have grown and grown and grown. The biggest churches out there are these prosperity teachers, seeker sensitive, watered down, wishy washy prosperity teachers. You know, there was a guy going all the way back to the seven, early 1700s from England, a prolific author, English author, Daniel Defoe. He stepped back and he was analyzing the church and the growth of the church. And his conclusion was absolutely fascinating. He says this, wherever God erects a house of prayer, the devil always builds a chapel there. And twill be found upon examination, the latter has the largest congregation. Why is that? Why does Satan get the larger congregations? Because that's who the people want. That's the message that the people want to receive. They don't want to go to church anymore to be convicted. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to change. They have covetous hearts. They want the things of the world. Preach it to me. What is it that we desire? Yeshua says, you invest in the world, you're dead. And then he says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Do you understand? Your treasure depicts that which you love, that which you desire. Your treasure depicts the passions of your heart. And if that are the things of the world, that is where your heart is. Your treasure depicts who you serve, who you serve. That is a sobering thought when you actually do a true audit of your life. Yeshua says this, he says, take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Yeshua is coming out with the warning. Why? Why does Yeshua have to warn us about covetousness? Because Yeshua knows the dark power, the draw, how compelling, how convincing the devil is with what he has to sell you. He has investments he wants you to invest in. All worldly, all will come to an end, all will burn. But he's going to pitch it as, this is going to be the greatest pleasure you'll ever know. James Chapter four, verse one, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and you cannot attain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I don't care if it's 1%, 2%, 10% that you're going to give your heart over to covetousness, over to the things of the devil. It goes back to what Yeshua was saying. You hate him. You make yourself an enemy of God. You have to make your decision right now. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Full surrender to Yeshua or you're not in. Paul says this, and and please listen carefully because this is huge. You want to talk about putting everything into perspective that we talked about today and in your life. This does it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. I want that to sink in because there's a lot of people that might be here today. There's a lot of people that might be watching online right now. If they're honest, they're going to say, you know what? I don't have the joy I used to have. I don't feel connected to the Lord anymore. I feel almost complacent. I feel there's an emptiness within me. I don't feel the power. When I came, first came into the faith, I had this power. I had this focus. I had this clarity. There's all these things that we feel as believers. I want you to understand what is happening. Paul is telling you, you are not restricted by Paul. You're not restricted by Daniel. You're not restricted by your family members, by your spouses. You're not restricted by anyone. You're not restricted by the Lord. You are restricted by your own affections. So if you wonder why you've lost 
that passion, you've lost that fire, you've lost that joy, you've lost that focus, you've lost that clarity. And I'm telling you right now, you have affections for the world and it has limited you. We cannot walk in the power of Yeshua while you hold on to your love for the world. You have nothing, you have no power. And this is why we have powerless, empty vessels calling themselves Christians that make no difference in anybody's life. Hey there, this is Mike at Corner Fringe Ministries, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We hope that it blessed you and it encouraged you. And if it did, please hit the thumbs up on the video and share it with your friends and family. It's also, if you haven't already considered, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, if you'd like to watch the entire video, click on this link. And if you'd like to watch the entire series and learn more about what we, we do and believe here at Corner Fringe Ministries, click on this link. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video, and we hope to see you again soon. Shalom.